Hello everyone and welcome back to another interesting topic to enhance your spoken English. Now, grab a cup of coffee because this video is going to be a little lengthier. This is not a sponsor video, it's just my favorite mug right in front of you. In this video, I'm going to help you to find the answer or find the logic behind creating perfect questions. You guys are already aware that in order to create a good conversation, in order to have a good conversation, you need to learn the skill of asking questions. I've created a lot of videos on this subject and in this video, I'm going to help you how to create perfect questions so that you can sound more confident next time you're having a conversation with someone. There are three most important things when it comes to creating a perfect question or in order to create any kind of questions. Number one, what is the structure of a question sentence? So if I'm asking a question, there has to be a set of words that will be arranged in a sentence. Number two, how many types of questions are there? Is there only one type of questions or can there be many types of questions? And third, the rules to follow when it comes to creating questions. So as I mentioned that these are three most important things that you have to keep in mind when you are trying to create a question. Let's talk about the first and foremost important thing when it comes to knowing the structure of a proper question. Now there are four important elements. There is the question word in the phrase, there is an auxiliary verb in the sentence, there has to be a subject in that sentence and then comes your main verb. All right. So as I mentioned, these four important elements will be arranged in a sentence properly. And that's how you will create a good question. Let's look into an example of a question. Why are you mad at me? Why are you mad at me? In this sentence, why is a question word. So this is the first element. Why is a question word and then comes are. R is your auxiliary verb or an helping verb. In certain cases, auxiliary verb and helping verb can also be replaced with modal verbs or you can say modal auxiliary verb. Why are? And the third element is the subject in that sentence. Please understand the structure will always remain the same. Why are you mad? Mad is your main verb in that sentence. And then you have some extra information at the end, which is perfectly fine. So if I'm going to repeat the sentence again, why are you mad at me? Why is your question word? Are is your helping verb? You is the subject. Mad is the main verb in that sentence. Okay, let's take another example and try to understand. I'm going to talk a little bit about auxiliary verb because this is the subject which all of us are mostly confused about. How many types of auxiliary verbs do we have? Do I need to know all of them or can I just confine my knowledge to one, two or three or four auxiliary verbs and I can create questions? So the answer to this question is yes. The most important auxiliary verbs will be be, have and do. If you can remember these three auxiliary verbs and you remember their consecutive forms in present and past or the future form, you don't have to worry about it at all. When it comes to be, the past form is was and verb. The present form is is, am and are. When it comes to do, the forms are do and does. When it comes to have, you have has, have and had. All right. So these are the auxiliary verbs which keep on changing depending on the subject that I'm using in that sentence. So the relationship between the subject and the auxiliary verb is very important. I'm going to talk about that a little while later. With this, we have come to an end to the first important thing that was the structure of a question. And I'm 100% sure by now you already know what is a proper structure for creating a perfect question. Now let's talk about types of questions. There are two types of questions. Number one is a closed question. The second one is an open question. Now, isn't that something that you might be hearing for the first time? Believe me or not, at some point of some point at my in my life, I was not aware that there are two kinds of questions. All I knew about questions was that, you know what, if you want to ask something, how somebody's feeling or where they are going, where do they live? What is their favorite vacation spot? These are just questions. I was not aware that in these questions, the categories are there. Close questions, open questions. Close questions are those questions which starts with an auxiliary verb in that sentence. That means they do not have a question word in that sentence. All right, let's create a question. Is she mad at me? 
is is an auxiliary verb she is the subject mad is a verb main verb and then extra information where is the question word in this sentence it's probably missing and that's right when the question word is missing from the sentence that is called as a closed question another important thing to understand a closed question is that they do not need much response to it if somebody asks you is she mad at me the answer can be yes she is no she is not so the reply or the answers to the closed questions are very simple they do not need any extra information and they are mostly used to just understand the situation or collect tiny bit information or confirmation about a certain situation so if somebody ask you next time are you mad at me this is a closed question just say yes i'm mad at you no i'm not mad at you if somebody ask you are you planning to take a trip next saturday you can say yes i'm planning to take a trip no i'm not planning to take a trip so the answer or the replies to these questions are somewhere related to the question itself you don't need any extra information now let's imagine the situation when you're trying to talk to someone for the first time it's a complete stranger you can just ask them are you in this room for the first time are you in the city for the first time yes i'm in the city for the first time you can also ask them did you like the movie did you enjoy the seminar or uh, you can say are you planning to stay here for a while yes i'm planning to stay here for a while so this is the perfect ice breaker between two people you just need to ask a closed end question ask them a closed question the reply is going to come yes or no straight forward and that's it once you know the question once you have confirmed the situation you can ask the second type of questions and they are called as open and questions now open and questions are those which needs a proper question word in the start it needs an auxiliary verb it needs a subject it needs the main verb and some extra information right all sort of questions that you ask with your to your friends you ask with your col colleagues all of them are called as open and questions open and questions are used to collect information once you have confirmed the situation you need to collect more data from that person and that's when you need open end questions you can also call them open questions all right so in open questions you need a question word you need the main verb you need the auxiliary verb you need the subject right but on the other hand for closed end questions you did not need a question word or a question phrase that's the first major difference between two types of questions number 2 the reply to open end questions are always larger they're always bigger if somebody ask you this question what are you planning for the weekend now what are you planning for the weekend needs lot of responses i can say i'm planning to go i'm planning to take a trip to china i'm planning to spend my weekend with my parents i'm planning to uh, go for fishing on this weekend all of these responses were little different from what the question was asked right so coming back to the same logic if you are trying to create an open end question you need more elaborative answers you need to prepare some of the answers for the most commonly uh, asked questions that brings me to the final stage of this video and that is the rules that i should always keep in mind when it comes to asking questions rule 1 focus on the intonation now the big question arises in this sentence not for all of you but for some of you what is an intonation intonation is the up and down in your voice when you try to communicate with someone now focus on the way i'm speaking i feel really tired right now i think i'm going to sleep i feel really tired right now i'm going to sleep so when i'm raising my voice up and i'm dropping it down this is called as intonation in closed end questions the intonation will go up towards the end okay focus on the on this statement right now are you crying are you crying now towards the end i'm increasing my tone and that is the intonation will go up in closed end questions are you cooking are you cooking all right now let's talk about open end questions the intonation towards the end will go down what have you gifted him on his birthday what have you gifted him on his birthday now the major focus will go on the first part of the sentence and less on the next part and that's why the intonation will go down this is a rule you should always keep in mind please understand the simple logic very carefully 
when it comes to communicating effectively with someone you need to work on the structure of that sentence and also the way you're going to communicate that half of your communication can become flawless if you can focus on the sound of those phrases if you can focus on the sound of those sentences so when it comes to asking questions focus is your question open end yes focus on the first part of the sentence and leave the next one raise your voice up and then drop it down when it comes to close end questions i'm going to raise the intonation towards the end i'm going to say are you serious are you kidding these are some of the sentences that you can keep in now let's talk about the last part of this video and that is rule 2 the relationship between the auxiliary verb and the subject in that sentence now focus on these two questions that are there on your screen has she called me has she called me have i called him have i called him so when i say has she i've used has because the subject was she in the sentence if the subject was i i'll say have i called him so the relationship between the subject and the auxiliary verb is interrelated if you are changing the subject automatically auxiliary verb is going to change if you are changing the auxiliary verb the subject will be used according to that always keep in mind you cannot say have she called me that's grammatically incorrect has she called me have they called me and that's fine I'm going to give you two more examples to understand this relationship between auxiliary verb and subject a little well. Where were they when you called him, them? Where was he when you called him? Where was he when you called him? So the combination of was he were they is totally interrelated. If I'm using were automatically subjects will have to be plural. It can be they, it can be we or something else. But if I'm say where was he, so I can only use where was she, where was he or something which is singular. That brings me to the end of this video and believe me, I enjoyed it a lot lot while creating this content for you guys and I'm 100% sure you might have learned something interesting. Now please remember if you have a friend who is in this journey of learning english with you please feel free to share this video with them make sure that you like this video because we desperately need your likes so that we get motivated next time to come up with something interesting and also please subscribe to the channel learn with samanash you know us you know how this thing work you subscribe and we come up with new data every single time and please share the video as i already mentioned i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in the next video enjoy yourself bye bye